preparing prototypes preparing prototypes uh, <risa> hace 50 segundos madre mía a ver Eh... Oh, es cierto, Inquisidor, tío. Sí, señor. El, en nuestro Discord, tío. Buena ahí, tío. Bien. Entonces. Vamos a ponerle calidad a full antes de que la líe. Eh... Buenas a todos, chavales. Otro jueves más. Con el Inside de Star Citizen. <ríe> Mierda, y la tecla de Windows. Welcome everyone to another episode of Inside Star Citizen. Our weekly look at the behind the scenes development of what my mother calls that video game Jared's making whenever she explains it to her friends. It's quarter three. And if you've been following this show in any of its incarnations for a while now, you know that the road to CitizenCon is a very interesting one for our weekly video content, as we skillfully avoid all the hot topics being saved for the big now two-day event and use the, that challenge as an opportunity to explore aspects of our development that might otherwise never get a chance to shine. It's an opportunity this quarter to... Bueno, está comentando de que como estamos coming al roadmap, eh, ya sabemos que nos toca cerrar el grifo de la info. Sabéis que nos toca cerrar el grifo de la info y es una oportunidad para poder mostrar aquellas cosas que quizás no brillarían de otra manera. Look at how Rastar is being used to remaster existing UGFs in Alpha 320, uh, to explore racing a little bit and a, and a new ship that readers of Jump Point Magazine in our social media channel a little bit and a remaster existing UGFs in Alpha 320 no, no, two day event and use the, that challenge as an opportunity to explore aspects of our development that might otherwise never get a chance to shine. It's an opportunity this quarter to look at how Rastar is being used to remaster existing UGFs in Alpha 320, uh, to explore racing a eh, A ver, utilizar Rastar para remasterizar los, eh, las instalaciones bajo tierra existentes en la 3.20. Interesante. A little bit, and a, and a new ship that readers of Jump Point Magazine and our social media channels probably already know is on its way. An update to Claudius and how it's being used to create even more immersive environments heading your way. And then a spin around the whole VFX department to see what they're up to. Vale, están hablando de actualizaciones a Claudius, eh, que es el tema de, del audio. Eh, también el tema de... Eh, ¿Cómo se llamaba, coño? Create even more immersive environments. Ah, el tema de la de la uno de la bombardera. Heading your way, and then a spin around the whole VFX department to see what they're up to. Yes, Virginia, it's true. There will be fire. We can do all this and more as we navigate our journey to the big two days in October. But up this week, and my reason for sitting here at my desk, dumping just a little bit of SCL into our ISC, is to talk to Torsten and Jacob from the EUPU feature team about the prototyping process how they test design and programming implementations at the earliest stages and how it relates to munching, an important component of salvage and my nightly routine just 20 minutes before I go to sleep. Vale, eh, está comentando que nos van a comentar pues un, un tema de, de el prototipo, el estado en el estado temprano del desarrollo de, del munching del machaque. Aparte de que a lo largo de estos días nos van a ir comentando eh, sobre el tema de, de Claudio, de, o sea, de Claudio, que es el, el programita este de audio para poder acelerar el proceso de, de incluir sonidos en el videojuego y poder tunearlos, ¿no? Sin tener que hacerlo todo a mano. O sea, que sea algo más, eh, más fácil de implementar por, por parte de los artistas. Y luego, pues, eh, el tema de la, de la 1, que también lo, lo iremos viendo, la bombardera, que ya habéis visto que está en el roadmap y tal, que supongo que nos irán contando cositas. La verdad que tengo ganas de saber. Eh, cuál va a ser el, el radio de, de la bomba ¿no? al, al estallar y también más cosas de, de efectos especiales y demás, estaría bien que nos hablasen sobre el sobre Vulcan o cosas así pero, pero vamos a ver al final daros cuenta de que el taco gordo gordo vendrá para la con Torsten, Jacob, how you doing people? Doing good I am fine, thank you 
Hi. So we are here talking about a uh, uh, prototyping process. Um, before we get into it, uh, give me the top level, just the just the, the the like the LinkedIn version answer. What is a prototype, and why do we do it? A prototype basically can have several facets in game development, and for us particular, it is always about gameplay, and in this particular case, it is about the technical. So, but the, the technical problems that we might face and we might have to solve. Vale, acercaros al el, qué es un prototipo y qué es lo que hace un prototipo ¿no? en, en, en la rama, en el campo que están trabajando en el equipo de, de EUPU, del Universo Presidente de, de Europa. Están, eh, están comentando de, de que en este caso pues sirve para enfrentar, eh, lo, lo quieren enfocar en, en puede ser para, para cosas de gameplay, pero en este caso lo quieren enfocar en problemas técnicos que puedan surgir a la hora de hacer esto. So for that we always use prototypes and uh, playtesting those prototypes is a crucial part in game development where it is mainly used to prove theories, where the theory is either gameplay is fun, does it technically work, and this is basically what what the, the purpose of a prototype. Claro, dice que la, las pruebas que hacen con los prototipos es si eh, probar teorías de que si si es divertido para jugar o o si si va a funcionar eh, a nivel de la tecnología que tiene. Anything you want to add, Jacob? From from more of a dev perspective, uh, we tend to take what the designer's vision is for uh, gameplay, and then we've got to figure out how can we achieve that in the game uh, and just often that's not crystal clear from the start so we have to try a few things and see what technical hurdles might be uh, ahead of us that we're going to have to consider for the full development so what we're going to do claro, o sea, a la hora de o sea, a la hora de desarrollar una característica nueva pues tienen que hacer el, el prototipo para mirar eh, eh, que, o sea cuando cuando tienen una idea que la quieren implementar en el juego tienen que mirar eh, cómo la pueden hacer y que no siempre está claro como el cristal el, el hecho de, de poder implementarla y sobre todo de ver a ver qué problemas se pueden enfrentar eh, a, o sea qué dificultades técnicas se pueden encontrar en el camino a la hora de tratar de implementar una característica nueva. On this week's show, the first of our quarter three shows where things are a little bit different, we are going to look at a feature at the absolutely earliest stage. This is earlier than we've ever shown any feature ever the prototype phase. Uh, what we're about to show you is not going to look good, it's not going to look pretty. Uh... Claro, lo, lo que nos vamos... Lo, o sea, están recalcándolo mucho. O sea, esto es un prototipo, nunca se ha enseñado algo en una fase tan temprana de, de desarrollo, no va a pintar bien. It's going to be weird, poppy and, and buggy, so we're just warning you ahead before you, you take the footage and, and claro que va a estar buggy y demás. Uh, what is the prototype that we're going to look at right now? Eh, tengo que mirar un momento. Eh... Buggy, so we're just warning you ahead before you, you take the footage. <laughs> le han tirado puto papel. Diciendo que va a haber cosas apareciendo por ahí. Y le han tirado un puto papel al... al... Ay. Pretty. Uh, it's going to be weird, poppy, and, and buggy. So we're just warning you ahead before you, you take the footage and, and, and put it in your YouTube videos. Uh, what is the prototype that we're going to look at right now, Jacob? We're going to be looking at the prototype for uh, Muntring, the next tier of salvage. The idea being we need some way to take apart a larger ship and break it into little pieces so that you can then pick it up in your salvage ships, gain some material from that, and you'll be able to sell that later. But we're going to be looking at just the breaking a ship apart phase, which is what we're prototyping here. Right, so I got Vale, la idea es poder eh, pillar una gran nave, reventarla y, y luego poder ir a vender esos materiales, conseguir esos materiales y poder vender esos materiales, pero dice que ahora vamos a ver solo la parte en la que destruyen la, la, la que de, despiezan a la nave. Cute up here, let's take a look at this here. So, obviously this is a vulture approaching a gladius. La tenemos una vulture hacia um, un gladius. So, with the prototype we've added in a new Monitoring mode, sub mode to salvage. So all of that hull scraping UI has disappeared, uh, and we're going down to just what we need for this prototype, which is the ability to break apart a ship, uh, which at the moment is going to look exactly the same as if you blew it up with your guns. But in future, that would look rather different. What's happening right here? I see the bar filling up on the left. Okay, nothing's so, happening with the ship. Yeah, so this is the, the placeholder for the actual gameplay that would happen okay. here. 
the design will have some actual gameplay for what you have to do as a player to break the ship apart but we put in that little placeholder which is just essentially a timer a progress bar based on how big the target is and, uh, and that is actually on on purpose because the, the question that we are asking in this prototype are more technical that means that we don't have we shouldn't focus on the gameplay aspect so we should keep the gameplay as minimal or as simple as possible and then uh, so that we can fully focus on the technical bits of, of the prototype okay so we saw it we, we saw it broken into some you know what looked like normal debris but now we got to break it into smaller munchable stuff so we'll go back to the video here so break vale hay que tener una cosa en cuenta eh, lo que acabamos de ver aquí en el video vale Hemos visto que hay un contador aquí a la izquierda y que se ha llenado esta barra y que luego ha explotado. Dice que esto es un placeholder para romper la, la nave en piezas, que no es algo que vaya a estar después, ¿vale? Que simplemente es algo que han hecho ahora para poder centrarse en, en lo que quieren testear ellos, ¿de acuerdo? Vale, aquí están haciendo lo mismo, están utilizando un placeholder, ¿vale? Para despiezar esto otra vez. ¿Vale? Esto no es que vaya a ser así, es un acceso temprano, el macha que no va a ser de esta manera. Claro, lo que nos está comentando es que habrá un proceso de despiece de lo que es la estructura general, otro proceso de que es lo, lo, las, las piezas que resultan de, esa, de ese primer despiece y luego las micropiezas que son lo que vamos a, a succionar. Es un poquito como la minería, ¿no? Entonces nosotros tenemos la piedra grande, partimos la piedra grande, luego salen piedras pequeñas, partimos las piedras pequeñas y entonces es cuando ya podemos empezar a, a recolectar. Pues esto es un poco el concepto similar, ¿no? Los little pieces that we saw are obviously uh, not art and anything. I want to remind people again, we've, we've literally never shown anything in a prototype face before, face before so forgive me for reiterating this uh, two or three more times before we're done here. Ya, vuelve a insistir en el tema de que recordemos, esto es un prototipo, nunca hemos enseñado algo tan temprano, recordar que esto no es la forma final en absoluto, que simplemente es eh, una forma de poder trabajar con las ideas. This is designer art, just small pieces to, re to represent the kind of the mass and the, and the size of of stuff yes. that we might be using. It's even worse, it's Coda art. Yes, indeed. <laughs> this is this is the programmer equivalent of a white box test, uh, where I'm not even qualified to make white boxes, so I just rip off other assets that I found in the engine uh, and just slap them together. So that's what this is. And obviously, without being a prototype, there's no VFX, there's no explosions, there's no beams, there's no, none of the things that would mask this transition. Claro, no hay ningún tipo de cosa eh, de transición ni de nada, ni, ni, o sea, cuando vemos aquí, porque no hay asombros de tipo, no hay ni rayos, ni efectos especiales, ni nada. Las piezas que hay que vemos ahí son el, el resultante de una pieza que ellos han cogido de un motor y han eh, replicado, o sea, que no es algo simplemente un prototipo. Lo que estamos viendo en escena es eh, la, la puesta en práctica de cómo poder probar una idea. Just pop in, you know, like 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 they're currently doing. Yes. Um, all right. So that was done on your local machine. Uh, just you know, you on your workstation doing a local version of of the of the universe here. Uh, the next phase, as I understand it, is to test it in PU conditions. And we're going to go ahead and start this video because this video is going to go for a little bit. Tell me what we're doing here. Yeah. So uh, I'll tell you what we're doing, and then we can discuss later why we're doing that. Exactly. Um, what we're doing right here is uh, I want to test a worst case performance conditions. So. Hostia, estáis viendo el tema de que están ocultando todo el código. Hostia. Eh, bueno, <coughs> aparte de este detalle. Eh, dice que nos van a explicar lo que están haciendo, que antes lo estaban probando en una máquina local y ahora lo, lo vamos a poder ver en condiciones del universo presente. La prueba. I am chucking in some console commands to load up or stream in 
uh, several different landing zones at the same time. Uh, claro, dice que están escribiendo diferentes comandos para poder eh, lanzar diferentes eh, eh, zonas al mismo tiempo de aterrizaje. Uh, because otherwise, me as just one player on the server, I wouldn't really be loading that much. I wouldn't be stressing the server. So I'm going to stress it quite a lot uh, by loading up as many landing zones as I can think of off the top of my head, basically, uh, until I see that server FPS count uh, go appreciably lower. Um, and... Claro, está cargando las, las diferentes zonas de aterrizaje que el servidor las cargue para, eh, para asegurarse de que el, el, los FPS del servidor son eh, más bajos. ¿no? Then, only once I've done that, uh, am I going to step into the actual gameplay test. I also noticed you've upgraded from a Gladius to an 890 jump. Yes, because when I think worst case for breaking a big thing into small things, I want the biggest possible thing, which is going to require lots and lots of small things. Uh, so, yeah, 890 jump is a good candidate for that. Okay. So, <laughs> what are you typing here? Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm... Yeah, just typing in some comments for the. Uh... Ahora está diciendo tiene eh, bajo, malos servidores, o sea, bajos o sea, malos FPS de servidor para poder empezar la prueba eh, del Munchin y dice que además está probando pues con 890 porque es un bichardo y quieren probarlo con un bichardo para eh, que se conviertan muchas cosas pequeñas. ¿no? Other recipients of this video because this was uh, an internal video for you know reviewing stuff. Do you often use console commands to leave notes for people? <laughs> There are other ways, uh, but it's the most convenient. So, all right. Yeah. So, so we've got so we've got the server simulating PU conditions. All the all the landing zones are are loaded at once instead of you know streaming yes. in and out like they would normally would. Yes. So it's actually and worse than you would see on a normal PU. Indeed, and we're going to see that immediately. That uh, this breaking the ship apart uh, that we saw work so nicely in the editor. Well, I've really annoyed the server here because all of these pieces. <laughs> Uh, yeah, popping in in a not so great way, and I make a bit of a sarcastic comment about it. Claro, además está diciendo de que de que se nota que el servidor no está rindiendo como si fuera una máquina local, que está rindiendo como si fuera un LPU, porque las las cosas tardan bastante, ¿no? Porque está haciendo la misma eh, mecánica que hizo antes de del de placeholder de poder reventar la nave y vemos cómo ha tardado en, re en reventar y además hace locuras, ¿no? Uh, uh, um, but uh, yeah. It's important to create these conditions, you know, to, to, to test these things, not just in ideal conditions, not just the ideal universe of your own computer or even the PU when it's like first loads and nobody's in and everything's great. No, in, indeed. What I'm testing here is worse than we would hope it ever to be. We don't want it to ever be this bad, but we got to test it because it might be. All right, so now where beams would be shooting to, out, starting to break yeah, the ship apart. We, yeah, there'd be extra gameplay here, there'd be VFX or whatever, but... In the editor version, we saw pretty much as soon as the, the big piece disappeared, all those tiny little bits turned up. Well, it's not going to go that way in, in this situation. We're going to be waiting quite some time for all those little pieces to turn up. Gotcha. And so while we're waiting for those uh, uh, pieces to, to turn up... Vale, en la máquina local, eh, guay, pero aquí eh, estamos viendo que vamos a tener que esperar un buen rato hasta que las piezas eh, aparezcan, o las mini piezas aparezcan para poder empezar el munching. También comentaba... Eh, el, el tema de que eh, de que tienen que o sea, que utilizan esto para probar en, en malas condiciones de servidor no para poder obtener ese feedback up here um, let's talk about what we learned from uh, what, what we've learned from these tests so far um, uh, obviously there's some form and stuff but there's also some gameplay implications from what we've seen uh, Torsten you want to talk us through it well I can talk about some parts that we learned from right sure. so it's so the best thing that you can learn from a prototype is actually everything that goes bad because this is the stuff that you can then iterate on and make the, the gameplay or the, the technical stuff even better. So um, from the gameplay perspective, so I will just talk about the gameplay stuff and Jacob can talk about what we learned from the technical perspective there. Is, um, yeah, from the gameplay we learned that yeah, what about big ships? So how, for example, now you saw the vulture trying to attach to the 890 jump that is a bit of a wonky situation and it doesn't feel right so what what about vultures actually munching bigger ships so how can we make that an interesting gameplay then um you saw in the first video what happens when uh 
the, the ship transitions into the smaller bits. So the masking is, is a huge topic that we have to solve so that it feels right and you don't notice that one element pops away and another element pops in. So we, we definitely have to mask that. Then uh, what you might have seen in the first part is the conversion of materials. I don't know if you paid attention to the filler station bar that basically fills the SCU crates in the backside of the uh, wheelchair, but that filled drastically faster than it would normally do with hull scraping. That means that it would be more painful for you to munch because you have to stand up from your seat more often, go down to the filler station, remove the boxes. So this is definitely an uh, issue that we then have to solve because we really don't want to have. To. Claro, o sea, de entrada está comentando varias cosas. Eh, dice que él puede comentar sobre lo que están aprendiendo, lo que están viendo del, del, desde el punto de vista del gameplay, que la parte de lo técnico pues lo hará su compañero. Y está comentando, bueno, que uno de los problemas que tiene pues es efectivamente que no se siente bien, eh, no se siente correcto que una bull, eh, que, o sea, que una, que una bull tour vaya a reventar así una 890, que están mirando de formas de hacer ese gameplay. Eh, luego está el tema de que a la hora de, de utilizar lo que es la adquisición de materiales a través del munching, que las cajas se llenan demasiado rápido, lo que es la carga se llena demasiado rápido, que sería... Y que es un poco dolor el hecho de tener que bajar eh, y subir, bajar y subir. Había que hacerlo demasiado rápido porque la barra se llena muy rápido de, de material. This gameplay to be more tedious than it has, has to be. <laughs> so we have to find a solution how we can make it more, like, uh, yeah, much nicer for, for the player to act. Claro, esto es una de las cosas que, que yo creo que, que hemos comentado alguna vez, porque está diciendo de que tienen que buscar maneras de no hacer el, el gameplay de la, de la chatarra tan tedioso. Y que tienen que buscar alternativas. Yo dije en su momento que bueno que lo suyo para mí era poder tener poder controlar un rayo tractor desde, desde lo que es la cabina. Eh, un rayo tractor en forma remota y que puedas mover las cajas desde ahí. Yo creo que esa es la solución más interesante que, que, que pueden meter y la que tiene más sentido. O sea, no tiene sentido que realmente el operario se tenga que bajar de la nave y poner toda la operación en riesgo. Ya es una cuestión de... Eh, y, y, y que no están... O sea, si tú le tienes que dar un botón y, y te metes en una cámara remota de rayo tractor, creo que sería mucho más eficiente. Pero bueno, esto es algo que estoy comentando yo, no algo que estén comentando en el inside y que simplemente pues eh, tienen que buscar soluciones, está comentando, ¿no? Actually, remove those crates there. Then uh, the, the navigation around the pieces is also something that we notice isn't that fun. So we will probably utilize the tractor beams there because we are anyway working on them. But maybe that makes it much easier for players instead of flying around and getting the pieces between the fork uh, of the vulture and then having it disintegrate. But instead, you pulling the, the pieces in with a tractor beam. Uh, the, the fork of the vulture is very limiting. Claro, está comentando quizás a la hora de que no tiene, o sea, es un poco complicado el poder meter lo que son las pinzas de la Vulture, eh, meter los materiales en el medio, que quizás eh, incluir un rayo tractor para poder colocar las piezas en una posición adecuada. En términos de qué piezas van a encajar, esto es también algo que aprendimos. Y una gran cosa que siempre está presente es cómo podemos hacerlo divertido fun and unique for the reclaimer. So we just were looking in the prototype at the Vulture and the big question that our team was asking uh, in the end of that prototype was like, okay, how can we facilitate the, the claw and the uniqueness visuals or the uniqueness in general of the reclaimer to actually facilitate that gameplay and have it stand out and be meaningful and fun. El ver esto, chavales, a quien no le pone palote. A ver, está diciendo de que están buscando soluciones eh, para poder hacer el gameplay de la Reclaimer único con respecto a la, a, la, a la Vulture y cómo poder darle usos a la pinza. All right, so a lot of, a lot of gameplay, a lot of ga gameplay implications yes. from just that little prototype. Uh, uh, Jacob, what, what were your, what were your takeaways? Uh, from the, from the tech perspective, I'm looking at things like the performance and also uh just um what am i gonna have to account for to achieve the designer's vision here uh and i know that we're going to want things like the time that it takes to destroy something to be somewhat proportional for its size and mass 
but from the initial prototype I could already see that uh, uh, a bigger piece taking longer uh, it already takes you know, a few seconds with the gladius if we're going to scale that up uh, and, and scale up the time as well proportionally to a, to a big target we're going to have to think about what equation are we going to use for scaling that so that it doesn't take you ages uh, to, like sitting there for minutes to, to, to break something apart Claro, tienen que, tienen que mirar el hecho de que a la hora de, de poder hacer... Una de las cosas que tienen que tener en cuenta son los tiempos. Los tiempos de realizar la tarea, ¿no? Que, vale, si te lleva segundos con un, gladi con un Gladius, ¿de cuánto tiempo te llevaría eh, con una nave más grande, no? Y, y la fórmula para escalar, o sea, tampoco puede ser que esté el tío ahí parado mirando para el aire durante medio año. What dependencies uh, am I going to need to um, make? Well, get involved. Speaking of, you know, judging time, uh, the entity system uh, is taking a little bit of time to spawn all the spawn and debris. We've been talking. Uh, this is still going at the moment. <laughs> claro, dice mientras están hablando, el sistema de entidades sigue tomándose el tiempo para hacer aparecer eh, los, los los escombros. O sea que todavía no han salido los escombros, chavales. Después de toda esta charla. Obviously there's going to have to be some optimization work there with the entity system. This is uh, uh, kind of what we've got with with PES uh, is that uh, it's not quite as quick to create entities as before we had PES. Um, and you know, we have all sorts of great stuff that comes with PES. So this is just a small limitation that we have to learn to work around. Uh, but tells us that gameplay ideas that we had before PS might need some adaptation in order to work efficiently uh, in the, the, the post PS world. So yeah, so... Está comentando que antes del, del precision and streaming era mucho más rápido el crear entidades y que ahora tendrán que mirar eh, soluciones para para poder eh, eh, pues rodear ¿no? el, el problema buscar una solución al problema de, de que tarden tanto en generar las, las, las entidades que después de, del PES que, que ha cambiado la cosa, ¿no? Speaking of which, let's go back to the video. I think we're about to get the entity spawns now. Any sign that's yeah, playing be in here. the background <laughs> while we've should been be here any moment now, yes. There we go. Uh, there we go. And a bit of a flicker as they come in, but they're finally here. So, yeah, this, this tells us, well, in this worst case scenario, Uh, this performance is obviously unacceptable. Uh, we're going to have to do something about this. So. Claro, dice que, en, que esto, este, este tipo de rendimiento no es no es aceptable, así que van a tener que hacer algo al respecto. ¿no? Este gameplay no se puede tener. We are thinking about uh, how can we change our approach, how can we optimize what we've got. Discussions in various different directions, uh, but this is a key takeaway from this prototype because. If it had gone differently, if if we tried this and the pieces turned up in just a few seconds or so, then we'd have known that this approach on the whole was probably acceptable and with a little bit of optimization, it would work. But that's not what happened. Uh, the stuff took minutes to arrive and that means we have to do some more serious rethinking about how we're going to approach this. The vision and the, the basically the acceptance criteria our directors uh, define, they, they they are still untouched, right? So those are still to be fulfilled. And uh, even the, the overall vision that we as the team defined for how that gameplay should play out, those those will be like, those are already set in stone because we all agreed on those. But how the actual gameplay then plays and feels, this is still affected by uh, by the prototype. A prototype like this uh, is really perfect for, for stepping in early and making sure that every every tick box on our acceptance criteria is met. And, uh... I think that's the idea of how they want to work the mascado, ¿vale? de lo que son la chatarra, que lo tienen claro, que lo tienen en piedra, han dicho tal cual. O sea, eh, están firmes con eso y coinciden en, en, en el equipo, en la, en la idea que quieren eh, lograr. Eh, ahora lo que, lo que les falta es, es la parte de la sensación que transmite de cómo se siente realizar ese tipo de gameplay y, y que eso pues lo tienen que conseguir a través de, del prototipo y de, y de pensar. ¿no? Eh, o sea que la, la visión la, la tienen clara. Obviamente también comentaba de el compañero, ¿no? 
de que el tener un rendimiento así, de que tarde tanto en hacer esta, esta mecánica en condiciones del servidor, de tal y como están las cosas, pues que no se puede tener así, que van a tener que repensar la mecánica, o sea, van a tener que repensar el cómo hacer esto para que no tarde 11 minutos en, en popear la, la chatarra, obviamente. We can make a better game day out of it. I, I think we, we all have a, 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 a real uh, desire and responsibility towards, you know, testing these things as often and as early and under as much duress as possible uh, to, as we work to stabilize the PU and make it a more enjoyable experience going forward. So, uh, Torsten, uh, Jacob, thank you. Thank you for hanging out with us uh, today. Thank you very thank much. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. So what did we learn this week? Well, we learned that prototyping doesn't really look like much of anything, but it's an essential step towards proving out design and performance before all the artists and other devs go in to do their thing. That it's just as important to prove out good ideas and good paths to take as it is to encourage developers to seek out another way towards success. And that it's important to continue refining not just the features and content being made, but the very way that we test those things earlier and earlier and under a scale of duress. For Inside Star Citizen, I'm Jared Huckabee. Thank you for letting us share the process of game development with you, and we'll see you all here next week. Yeah, yo soy Jared, gracias por dejarme compartir el, dejarnos compartir el proceso del desarrollo de un videojuego con vosotros. Eh, aparte, nos están comentando de que esto es un prototipo y que hemos aprendido, bueno, pues que hemos aprendido hoy, pues que cómo se hace un prototipo, eh, cómo se prueban cosas, eh, que cómo, cuál es el proceso que se, que se realiza antes de que otros desarrolladores y artistas eh, metan la mano ahí. Y ya. Pues ya estaría, chavales. A ver. Eh, a mí personalmente me, me ha molado que ver esto. Tengo el SC aparcado, pero no me olvido de lo importante. La Supara <risa> Muchas gracias, Randur. Muchas gracias por apoyar el canal, tío. Pues a ver... Eh... ¡Ah! Hasta aquí el directo de hoy, chavales. Vamos a dejarlo ya por aquí. Que estaba esperando al, al Inside y a la sub de Randur. <risa> No, en serio, eh, vamos a dejarlo por aquí <risa> Madre mía Vamos a dejarlo por aquí, chavales Que eh, Que bueno, que así con, con calmita Vamos a dejarlo Mañana, mañana venimos y, y vamos a darle ahí Al tema de De hacer los eh, Lo diré De hacer el, De hacer de guía Mañana toca hacer de guía O, o participar en algún en alguna guía de alguien para ver si, si nos sacamos esa armadura y ya completamos el tener los, los todos los sets de armadura que están dando por la temporada de fundadores eh, recordar a la gente que se quiera crear cuenta en Star Citizen que ahora mismo pues están dando un regalito vale para la gente que utilice referral ahí tenéis uno vale y y ya y ya no creo que sí esto, eh, ah, decir que decir sí, una cosa importante que, 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 que bien me han sentado estos días eh, rascándome los huevos a dos manos, chavales. O sea, qué que pasada, qué que necesario. O sea, hay que descansar un poco en la vida, si no, no es necesario. O sea, tiene que haber un momento, un periodo de que digas, me voy a rascar los huevos y a, y, y a gusto. O sea, porque si no, o sea, hay, que, hay que reponer pilas de vez en cuando, chavales. Es lo que hay. Eh. <risa> Dicho esto, eh, menudas hostias nos dieron ahí los italianos en, en, el, en las pruebas del Atmos Force, del, del, del Fight or Flight, del Fly or Fight. Eh, madre mía, chaval. Qué locura. 
hay que, hay que mirar a ver cómo, cómo vamos a sacar eso adelante y, y resolverlo y a ver si somos capaces de hacer algo en el torneo, chavales. Eh, lo, lo he dicho. Eh, muchas gracias de verdad por el tremendo apoyo que, que me dais. Espero que los que estéis sufriendo el verano no lo sufráis demasiado. Eh, disfrutar de, de la noche, chavales, si estáis jugando con sea leve. Y mañana más. Nos vemos mañana, chicos. Besitos a todos. ¡Hasta luego!